India's new hypersonic, Vani, is a game changer. A hypersonic glide vehicle concept slated for testing by the end of 2025, designed to fly at roughly 7,400 km per hour, well above Mach 5, with high-G maneuverability that dramatically complicates detection, tracking, and interception by contemporary air defense systems. If fielded and employed with the same precision strike doctrine that underpinned Brahmo's raids in Operation Sindhua, Dvani would compress Pakistan's warning time to mere minutes over typical cross-border ranges and impose severe stress on sensor to shooter loops, command decisions, and interceptor kinematics across the engagement envelope. Dvani is described as a hypersonic glide vehicle, boosted to high altitude and then released to execute an unpowered, high-speed, maneuvering glide toward its target, enabling unpredictable flight paths and sharp cross-range shifts that degrade radar, fire control solutions, and mid-course queuing for interceptors. Public reporting places its intended speed band above Mach 5, around 7,400 km per hour, overtaking classic supersonic cruise missiles like BrahMos and pushing engagement timelines into the single-digit minute regime for regional strikes. Indian defense coverage links Dvani's architecture to DRDO's hypersonic foundations, leveraging high-temperature materials, thermal barrier coatings, guidance, and control matured through prior demonstrators to survive the aerothermal load of hypersonic flight while sustaining controllability for terminal maneuvering. Hypersonic glide profiles defeat the assumptions baked into most air defense networks. They fly lower than ballistic arcs, yet faster than supersonic crews, with lateral weaving and altitude changes that complicate track correlation across distributed sensors and reduce the effectiveness of exo-atmospheric mid-course intercept windows. Even advanced layered systems optimized for ballistic or cruise profiles struggle when facing a target that can shift cross-range and vary altitude at hypersonic speed, shrinking the engagement basket and forcing late window intercept attempts with degraded probability of kill. At roughly 7,400 km per hour, Dvani covers about 2,050 meters per second. Over a 300 km shot, time to target is around two and a half minutes, and even at 600 km, flight time is about five minutes, leaving a vanishingly small window for detection, track confirmation, command authorization, and launch of interceptors with sufficient lead. In practice, the effective reaction time is shorter because initial detection is delayed by radar horizon limits at low to mid altitudes and by the need to deconflict clutter and classify a maneuvering hypersonic track, which further compresses Pakistan's shooter timeline to the lower end of the single digit minutes in many cross low sea or Punjab Sindh corridor scenarios. A booster lofts the glide vehicle to high altitude, then separation yields a semi ballistic arc transitioning into controlled hypersonic glide at lower altitudes, enabling sea skimming over maritime targets or terrain following over land to mask against radar, while terminal phase pull-ups and jinks disrupt predicted intercept points. By avoiding a purely ballistic profile, Dvani denies exo-atmospheric intercepts optimized for ballistic mid-course, and by staying faster and more agile than cruise missiles, it degrades endo-atmospheric batteries tuned for predictable, high RCS supersonic threats. Operation Sindhua's Brahmo's strikes demonstrated precision, speed, and coordination to hit Pakistani airbases and infrastructure in compressed windows using supersonic cruise missiles and DKs, stunning air defense responses, and enabling follow-on operations across multiple bases in quick succession. A Dvani enabled strike package would push this further. Higher speed shrinks timelines, maneuvering glide complicates queuing, and path unpredictability strains defended asset coverage, making it harder for Pakistan to mass interceptors at the correct azimuth and altitude in time, while Indian planners recycle Sindhua's playbook of deception, multi axis launches, and electronic warfare to saturate decision cycles. Given cross border geographies, Typical launch-to-impact at hypersonic speed grants 
Pakistan a warning measured in a handful of minutes. With the initial minute often consumed by detection and classification, the next by command authorization, and only the remainder available for intercept to fly out, which is rarely sufficient if the target performs terminal maneuvers and altitude shifts. Early warning radars can extend detection range, but radar horizon physics at lower flight paths and the need to correlate fast changing tracks mean tactical batteries will frequently receive late low-quality tracks, complicating firing solutions and Salvo Management Pakistan's most viable responses center on layered defenses, sensor fusion, and shoot-look-shoot -shoot tactics. Yet hypersonic maneuvering degrades all three by reducing time for track fusion, forcing hurried Salvo shots, and limiting the opportunity to assess and re-engage before impact. Systems tailored to ballistic threats need precise apogee and mid-course queuing, which Dvani denies, while crews' optimized interceptors face a target that arrives faster and maneuvers harder than their kinematic envelopes and guidance laws were built to handle, eroding probability of interception even with multiple shots. Multiple accounts of Sindhua describe India's coordinated use of Brahmo's salvos, deco aircraft, and deep strike planning to degrade or bypass Pakistan's air defense network and hit 11 airbases in a follow-on wave, illustrating how speed, surprise, and multi-vector attacks can unravel point defense postures in hours, not days. Public statements by senior Indian officials highlighted Brahmo's employment and suggested Pakistan's Chinese supplied air defense assets were ineffective or unused in that window underscoring the vulnerability of fixed-site defenses under time-compressed, high-precision pressure, a dynamic hypersonics would intensify. Analyses of the 2025 crisis indicate New Delhi shifted toward treating mass casualty terror incidents as acts of war with rapid punitive strikes, eroding the credibility of nuclear escalation threats as a deterrent to conventional retaliation and elevating the role of standoff precision weapons in crisis response. In that doctrinal context, Dvani serves as both deterrent and rapid reaction instrument, enabling deep, time-critical strikes against high-value, well-defended targets, while compressing the adversary's decision space and complicating escalation ladders by making early interception improbable. A hypersonic glide vehicle can be tailored for anti-access missions against air bases, integrated air defense nodes, hardened command and control sites, mobile missile units, and maritime surface groups, with trajectory agility to approach from unexpected azimuths and altitudes to exploit radar coverage seams. Maritime roles benefit from sea-skimming terminal profiles and cross-range corrections that defeat last-ditch close-in weapons, while land attack profiles leverage terrain to degrade radar line of sight and force late, low quality engagements over defended zones. Reporting emphasizes pinpoint precision, implying advanced guidance stacks, combining mid course inertial navigation aided by satellite updates with terminal seekers capable of discriminating targets through clutter while withstanding plasma effects and thermal noise at hypersonic speeds. Maintaining control authority at such velocities requires robust control surface actuation, aerodynamic shaping to manage shock interactions, and algorithms that can command high-G lateral maneuvers without inducing instability, all cited as areas DRDO has been maturing in preparation for a weaponized HGV. Hypersonic flight at near sea level dynamic pressures generates severe skin friction heating and shock-induced hotspots, demanding ceramics, high-temp composites, and tailored thermal barrier coatings capable of withstanding temperatures beyond 2,000 degrees Celsius while preserving structural stiffness and dimensional stability for precise control. Indian reports credit recent advances in protective coatings and aerothermal management as key enablers for translating demonstrator knowledge into an operational glide vehicle survivable across boost, glide, and terminal phases. An HGV like Dvani is architecture agnostic at the launcher level, 
solid rocket boosters from road mobile launchers, ship-based cells, or potentially air launch concepts enable broad basing and complex multi-axis salvo construction, which is central to overwhelming defenses in short windows. Indian coverage notes an emphasis on both maritime and land targets, implying a design path compatible with tri-service integration and rapid tasking from diverse launch points to saturate specific sectors or exploit highlighted air defense gaps identified by ISR. Some defense forum reporting speculates about strategic reach extensions into the many thousands of kilometers for future variants, doubling Agni V-class reach. While such numbers should be treated cautiously until official disclosures, even conservative regional strike ranges at hypersonic speed transform timing and survivability for conventional deterrence. In South Asia's tight geography, hypersonic time of flight does more to change operational reality than sheer range, because the decisive constraint is reaction time, not whether the missile can physically reach Lahore, Karachi, or interior airbases. Brahmos is a formidable supersonic cruise missile optimized for speed, precision, and sea skimming or terrain following at Mach 2 to 3, Prov. N in the Sindhua context, against defended airbases and infrastructure. Dvani's projected advantages, hypersonic speed, maneuvering glide, and path unpredictability, directly attack the defender's OODA loop and interceptor kinematics, yielding higher probability of arrival against layered defenses and enabling fewer missiles per aimpoint for the same desired effects in heavily defended zones. To cope, Pakistan must push detection outward with persistent airborne sensors, accelerate sensor fusion, pre-authorize rapid-fire doctrines, and stack interceptors with high-off boresight endgame agility. Each step carries cost and risk, and even then, probability of kill remains challenged against a maneuvering hypersonic vehicle. Fixed sight defenses will need redundancy and camouflage, decays and mobility become essential, and hard kill must be complemented by soft kill deception and electronic attack, measures that proved insufficiently responsive during the rapid strike counterstrike cycles chronicled in May 2025. Analysts chronicling the crisis noted India's willingness to launch precise, time-bounded punishment raids after mass casualty terror attacks, with senior leadership signaling reduced tolerance for nuclear blackmail as a restraint on conventional retaliation. In that playbook, Dvani provides a top-tier option for the first 24 to 36 hours, deep interdiction of airbases, IADS nodes, and leadership bunkers, before diplomatic pressure peaks and escalation management kicks in, thereby shaping the battle space early and imposing a deterrent lesson at pace. During and after the 2025 flare-up, Indian statements framed strikes as responses to terrorist violence and emphasized precision against terror infrastructure, while commentary highlighted the limited window for responses, the breadth of targets, and the need to deter future attacks decisively. In that environment, publicizing a near-term Jvani test and hypersonic competence serves both procurement momentum and deterrent signaling, telegraphing to Pakistan that future punitive raids might arrive faster, maneuver harder, and be even more difficult to stop than the Brahmos led Sindhua waves. At sea, Dvani's maneuvering glide would complicate fleet defense bubbles, stressing radar pickets and AAW escorts by denying stable fire control tracks until late, while terminal cross range corrections can defeat last ditch intercepts and CIWS solutions tuned for predictable supersonic sea skimmers. Carrier or major combatant groups must increase outer air battle depth and maintain continuous airborne early warning coverage to avoid surprise. Yet South Asian maritime choke points leave little room to extend engagement ranges before hypersonic arrival. Hypersonics like Dvani shift deterrence by increasing the credibility of fast, precise, conventional punishment without large-scale force mobilization, thus lowering the operational threshold for rapid retaliation while keeping the political threshold under tight control. For Pakistan,
This raises pressure to harden, disperse, and mobilize earlier during crises, which itself can appear escalatory, creating a more brittle crisis management environment where minutes matter and miscalculation risks rise. Effectiveness hinges on targeting quality and electromagnetic dominance. The Sindhu experience underscored the value of deception, decays, and timing to suppress or confuse defenders during the crucial first salvo. Vani would be paired with ISR queuing for time-sensitive targets and electronic attack to fracture track continuity, ensuring that when the glide vehicle appears on tactical radar, the defender's picture is already cluttered, late, and uncertain. Open source reporting places Dvani's initial test toward the end of 2025, with DRDO and HAL positioned as key actors under mission mode timelines that accelerated after Sindhua, aligning with a broader push to indigenize critical strike systems and IAD's survivable weapons. While exact range, seeker suite, and basing options await trials, the public narrative is consistent on speed class, HGV architecture, and the aim of outpacing Brahmos in survivability against modern defenses. From launch to impact over typical cross-border distances, Pakistan gets minutes, not tens of minutes, to detect, decide, assign shooters, and guide interceptors, an unforgiving timeline degraded further by Dvani's lateral and vertical maneuvering. Even if alerted by strategic warning, tactical batteries still confront late queuing and high closure rates making single-shot intercepts unlikely and multi-shot doctrines expensive and uncertain under the strain of multi-axis salvos. Replicating the Sindhua pattern with hypersonics means multi-target, multi-axis raids in a single night, with decays and electronic attacks saturating IADS while Dvani missiles prosecute the hardest nodes first. See two bunkers, sector operations, Sen. TERS long-range radar heads and quick reaction interceptor sites, opening corridors for follow-on strikes and unmanned swarms. The result is not just physical damage, but an information environment shock, command systems overwhelmed, confidence in defense shaken, and political leadership forced into immediate de-escalation calculus under pressure. Three shifts stand out. Reaction time collapses, defended asset coverage degrades as maneuvering glide breaks predicted baskets and strike density per aim point can be reduced because survivability per missile rises, enabling broader target sets in the first hours. For India, that means more credible first salvo effects with fewer platforms committed. For Pakistan, it means higher readiness costs and a premium on mobility, camouflage, and sensor fusion speed to avoid being caught in the late window. Tense public rhetoric in 2025 tied to terror attack fallout and crisis signaling, framed rapid punitive capability as essential, with analysts warning that each cycle risks faster, sharper exchanges dominated by standoff weapons. Vanny's emergence adds velocity to that logic, promising faster response and tougher to stop strikes, and thus placing a heavier burden on crisis management and back-channel the confliction to prevent missteps when minutes separate peace from escalation.